Hello YouTube, and welcome to my second part of my website series. In this part, we are going to go over cloning and mirroring websites. We can do this in many ways, automatically or manually. By manually, I mean reverse engineering or using wget. So what is website mirroring and cloning, and what are IDN homograph attacks? Website cloning refers to the copying or modification of an existing website design or script to create a new website. You're essentially copying someone else's website to use as your own or on your own local host. Now, why would we want to copy a website, you may be asking? Well, it's pretty simple. It's for social engineering. It's so we can trick people into thinking it's a legitimate website when it is not. This is good for credential harvesting. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so the first way we can do it is one of the manual, manual ways to do it. Um, this is the command we would type. We're going to use wget. So if we type in wget dash dash mirror, Mirror, which it makes uh, the download recursive, uh, dash dash convert links. Convert links, uh, it basically is conclusive to stuff like CSS style sheets and makes them relative so it's suitable for offline viewing. Okay, so you can view these links offline. Dash dash add just extension. This will add ex suitable extensions to file names like HTML or CSS depending on the content type. Then dash dash page re re requisites. Okay, and page re requisites downloads things like the CSS style sheets and images. Um, yeah, and then dash dash no parent. No parent is when you're recursing, it does not send the parent directory. It's useful for restricting the download to only a portion of the website. So you're not downloading like the entire database, just the website. Then we're going to type in, I'm going to use this website by the way. Um, right here, it's just a test site. It's what a lot of pen testers use. It's a very small page. So it's uh, www. What you have to put in the www. Too as well, and I believe it's .com. Yes, it's .com. Now it's going to take a while for it to clone. We're we are cloning a website after all, so I'll be back with you after it's done. Okay, YouTube, I'm back. Also, I would like to apologize for my mic. Uh, it actually broke, so it's going to be a while before I get my mic back, maybe a few days. So basically, the next thing you have to do is you have to type in ls. I guess we'll clear out the terminal first because it's very messy. Type in ls, and you can see that here in our home directory, it has the, uh, the website we cloned right here. Close out the terminal, go to files, click on the website. You you uh, clone, and it's going to have a whole bunch of HTML pages and other things as well. We're going to want to pay attention to the HTML pages, particularly index.html, which is the home page. So if you were to click on this, it's going to open. Um, it's going to open the page. As you can see, it looks just like the actual page, because it literally just copied all of the code we had on the other website so it looks like the actual legitimate web page. You could probably see where I'm going with this now when it comes to the social engineering part. So that's how you clone with wget. And yeah. One more thing with the wget thing. Um, an alternative method you can use for cloning with wget uh, instead of typing out that long string of characters is just typing in wget dash m k e p n p and then the url which is uh this it can be any url but this is the url i'm copying so yeah it'll do the same exact thing send an http request for the code yeah the next way you can do it is with social engineering toolkit usually it'll come stock with uh kali linux but if you don't have it Type in uh, sudo apt git install git. If you already have git, or yeah, it'll it'll prompt you install git. So I'm gonna install git real quick. 
The second thing it's going to do is it's going it may ask you to restart services. Just type, just hit yes. Then you can just go to Firefox or whatever browser you're using. I recommend Firefox. Social Engineering Toolkit will be right here. Clone or download. Copy the URL. Type in git clone that and it'll clone in with the social engineering toolkit. I don't even know why I'm doing this because I already have it, but I'm just showing you. Once downloaded, just type in it should be in your directory. So once downloaded, type in SE Toolkit. It'll ask you for social engineering attacks and such. We're going to hit one for social engineering attacks. Then we're going to go to website attack vectors, which is two. And then we're going to go to the credential harvester attack method, which is three. Site corner. Now we're going to type in the IP address, which is our IP address. So new tab or new window so it's going to ask us for the IP address so we go and open up a new tab type in ifconfig or we can type in IPA either one for our IP address so type in ifconfig and this is my IP address it's going to be right by this thing right here inet um, and if it doesn't work for you just type in dh client that should resolve everything and it'll make a file to fix that. So we're going to paste our IP address here. We're going to enter the URL to clone. I chose the Facebook login prompt. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm just going to paste it right into the prompt here and hit enter. It could take a little bit for it to um, process everything, but it didn't take me very long, so press return, or enter, um, so the information will be displayed here. We can put our IP address here, and then whenever we go to the IP address, it will take us back to the Facebook login page. If you purchase a domain like GoDaddy or something like that, it'll go up online for everybody, so when you send them the IP address or link, they'll think it's something else. It'll send an HTTP GET request to um, the server or your server from your IP address, and it'll send back information here. When a user clicks on or types in information like their keystrokes, um, it'll send back to that as well. Next thing up on the bucket list is uh, the IDN homograph attack. Uh, Undead Sec, which is a hacker group, I'm guessing, they made a um, toolkit for IDN homograph attacks to simplify. And basically, we're going to clone this with git clone, like we mentioned earlier. So we're just going to clone it here, and then pasting the URL, git, if you did it right, it's going to clone into evil URL, and that's done. If you type in ls, you have the evil URL thing right here, and you just go to that directory over here. You can see the directories right here, evil URL, and all of the stuff here. So after that, we just go to here, and then go to the evil URL thing. So we do cd evil URL, and then ls again. And then type in Python dash dash or Python 3 dash dash version to make sure you have the latest Python install. After that, type in Python 3 evil url.py and it should run the program. So you can generate evil URLs or detect them. We're going to generate them. So type in one, insert name as in like. A domain name like Google or something like that so I'm just gonna use the uh, test site we were using in the pin test site um, webscantest.com so we're just gonna type in for the domain webscan test 
and then for the domain we'll type in .com. For the domain we can type in .com, .net, .org, .gov. It's whatever. So here's the URLs right here. I would just like to say one more thing is that the, you see this thing that says character replace and the Unicode number? When we talk about Unicode, you think about the keys on your keyboard are the only thing that's there. Well, this is frankly not true because we have many, many character maps here. You go to the Windows character map. This is all of the Unicode ASCII values you have on your computer. It's crazy. And this is what replaces um, the stuff here. It looks legitimate, but the W was replaced here to make it look legitimate. In fact, when you look at ASCII art, like Unico art, people can do a lot of cool things with this. For example, look at these camels. People have made art of this kind of stuff. Lizards and, and uh, stuff like that. Art and design. Famous paintings people have reconstructed like this. Stuff like that. When you copy a uh, web scan test or whatever URL you copied, and you paste it up here to the search category on a website with the spoofed URL, it should work. Now, the server is going to usually time out on you or something like that, like so. It usually just times out, it, it keeps loading and it keeps loading, but it never actually loads, and you wonder why. Well, the reason for this is because I didn't buy a domain. I didn't buy a domain for uh, this here, so it's just an empty page. But if you were to clone a website, or if you were to purchase a domain like GoDaddy, or something like that Google you could put it online the website for phishing so yeah the last thing we're gonna go over or I should say the last two things we're gonna go over is HTT rack it's another website cloner and you can get it off of github or we can use the GUI version on Windows and we're gonna go over both today so if we just copy this and then we type in git clone and then we put in the URL once more it's gonna clone, and then we'll get the, you know the drill, once we have the file, we type in ls here, and we should have it here, HTT rack. However, an alternative method is typing in app git install HTT rack. That should work too, but since we already have it installed from GitHub, we have no problems here. Once we have HTT Rack, we can simply just type in HTT Rack right here. It's going to prompt us for the project name. But one thing I want to go over before we do any of this is we're going to type in the parameter HTT Rack dash dash help. You can also type in HTT Rack dash H. The parameter will show the same. It shows you some useful tips on how to use HTT Rack with all these now, shortcuts. Now, for us to actually here. start it, it's pretty simple, straightforward, and intuitive. What we need to do is type in HTT Rack, or, you know, you can type in sudo HTT Rack. It doesn't really matter. You type in your project name here. Um, I can name this random project. I can't think of a better name. The base path, I'll just put um, slash root, rot, my bad. Um, accidentally type, meant to type in root. Uh, URLs, the URL domain we're supposed to use. We're just going to use web scan test again because I don't really, can't really think of any better websites to clone. So yeah, here we go. Now it's going to give us a, cert a query or an option to mirror the website, mirror it with a wizard, get files, mirror all the links, test the links. We're going to mirror it because that's our primary focus today. So we're going to type in one. Um, it asks you for a proxy. If we don't want any, we can just hit enter. We don't want any. Wildcards, we're not going to really pay attention to that unless you want to download 
like uh, images or PDFs from a web website, we don't really need to use this. Additional options, uh, we're not really using additional options. And we type in Y to launch the mirror. Now it's going to take a little bit for it to mirror on the back the mirror. Does it. But alas, it is done. So once we've done that, it's in root. So we're just going to type in CD root, run root. And we have a random and project root. right here in the file manager. And go to random project one. And it'll show us all the information we've retrieved. We go to index.html. It opens right back up to where our um, website we cloned is. So yeah, that's the final part of uh, the website on Linux of copying websites. Now we're gonna go to the GUI version on Windows. So next, here's our um, website copier, HTT Rack. I'll provide the link in the description on downloading it. In fact, if you go to the website right now, you can download it for Windows 2000 to Windows 10. It's all right here, the exe and the zip files and the tar files for Linux. It's all there. So when we're here on the HTT rack, we need to open it. It's going to be prompted with this. We're just going to hit next. And then we're going to type a project name. We're going to name it the same thing that we did last time. But you can name it whatever you want to name it. Project category, just leave that blank. Uh, here's the base path. You can put whatever you want there. This is my path, my directory. Um, so yeah, just hit next. You're going to type uh, have web addresses right here. I'm going to use the same link we've been using throughout this whole video, which is the test site right here. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And then I'm going to paste it right here. Then we're going to hit next, or we, we have options here to download websites, get separated files, download all sites and pages with the multiple mirror. We're just going to download the website. So we're going to hit next, and we're going to leave all of this here. Don't check mark any of this unless you want your PC shut down. Um, and yeah, leave this here. Please adjust connection parameters if necessary, then finish the mirroring operation. So we're going to hit finish. It's going to take a while to finish the operation of copying everything and cloning. So uh, if you have a left of a project, just delete the empty project. Uh, you can view the log file here for all of the HTML pages we copied. Boy, we sure copied a lot here. I'm probably going to delete that after this video. Go to the project you saved. And you should see, actually don't go to the project, you say, click index, and you'll have the projects that you copied. So random project one, you click on that, and it's gonna take you to the website you cloned. Right here, it saves it right online on a cloud. I just wanna say thank you all so much for watching again. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and um, remember to stay safe out there, stay hacking, and um, I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.